guys welcome back to my channel so as you can tell from the title i did end up getting some knee pain basically i irritated my meniscus and i can't squat to depth i get pain when i do that and as of now i can't even bench and use leg drive because that causes pain too so i just want to share my experience of this pain and like what i'm doing to help relieve it and to help it recover as always this is just my opinion this is just what i did what works for me what doesn't work for me this is not medical advice so yeah today's monday january 31st on a hip banded squat session i leaned forward a little bit on a rep leaned forward to the point where my heels were off the ground and basically the pressure was all on my knees and not on my hips leaning forward is one of the problems that I always hit i usually have to really focus on making sure my heels are grounded so basically i lean forward on the rep i didn't hear like a pop there wasn't like instant pain there wasn't swelling or anything like that but that's when like the whole thing started when i started to get the pain it was in my left knee it was really weird because there was no pain no swelling but i couldn't bend my knee fully and then what i would have to do is i would have to like let it extend like lock out and then i could bend it again so it kind of like something was stuck and then once i extend my knee out and like move my knee a few times it let it move so that was no pain at all but when my knee was stuck like when i couldn't bend my knee a lot that had pain and then i just extend it out shake out my knee and then it'll be totally fine so after extending my knee out getting my full range of motion back i had no pain so that was like before my SPD day video and during that day same thing like i would have to extend my knee out a few times and squat and it'll be totally fine as you can see in the video but because like it was already kind of injured i did rely on my right knee a lot more which i will talk about later that's basically what happened and it stayed like that for about two weeks it didn't go better but it didn't get worse until the past week so the week of the 23rd on that tuesday when i did squats I had a lot of knee pain and I couldn't squat down all the way. I could only go like halfway down and also I had to widen out my stance so I could reach depth because the wider I stand, the less knee bending I have to do to reach depth. So that's what I did. But actually that was a really bad idea because that actually made my knee worse. So if you guys get knee pain or any kind of pain, don't push through it. Like actually rest. It's better to rest and have it recover than push through it until you actually have to rest. Like you can't work out anymore. And then the next day I did some deadlifts and I ended up wearing these thin knee sleeves. They're not like my SPDs where they get a lot of bounce out of them they're pretty thin and they're shorter as well they don't like give me so much of a bounce but they do make sure my knees stay warm so i wore these while i did deadlifts and it didn't hurt that much when i did deadlifts it definitely irritated it a bit more but because i don't bend down a lot for deadlifts i don't use my knees a lot for that and then after that session is when things got really bad i couldn't just like extend my leg and have it snap in the right position to get my full range of motion the pain was permanent well not permanent like i couldn't get rid of the pain and i didn't have my range of motion so that was wednesday the 26th when i went home from the gym my knee pain started getting worse and like even walking for a while would hurt and then on the next day which is thursday i had a call with the pt of tsa i actually scheduled the call way earlier but we had a complication with schedule and that kind of stuff that's why it ended up being on thursday and she told me that my meniscus is irritated and she gave me a few exercises to do and i'll show you guys the exercises somewhere in this video and then so i started doing those exercises i think peak pain like my worst day was definitely friday and then ever since friday it has been getting better so at first like in the way beginning i didn't have pain at all it was just like i had to basically move my knee around and it'll be fine and then next the pain was like the size of a ping pong ball like in that whole area there was pain now i have like a little bit of pain overall in my knee and then like there's a tiny dot of stronger pain where like the injury happened and also i'm getting a little bit more range of motion every single day which is also a good sign so the two signs i'm looking for for improvement is range of motion so am i increasing in my range of motion without pain because you don't want to go into any range of motion that you have pain and then the second thing is the pain is decreasing overall those are the two factors i am weighing my improvement on so some of the reasons why other than like that lean forward rep of why i got knee pain first of all i like spent a lot of time lifting without knee sleeves i even went to raw nationals without knee sleeves because i didn't know much back then and i didn't know the importance of keeping your knees warm on top of getting that bounce with a tight knee sleeve you also keep your knees warm which reduces the rate of injury by so much 
because the more blood flow there is and the more circulation there is number two i'm flat-footed at home i used to wear like slippers because i like to feel my feet on the ground and it's good to grow that foot muscle to feel the ground because that's how we're supposed to walk we're not supposed to walk in shoes like our foot is our shoe we don't need another shoe to like help support the foot and i've noticed that i've trained my arch a little bit better in the past few years just by walking with not like supported shoes at home but that still plays a factor because my knees tilt inwards a little when i stand because i'm flat-footed but speaking of shoes i did switch out my shoes at home now to tennis shoes that actually help to like correct my feet the reason why i'm switching them now because i don't have any strength in my knees in my legs now to keep my balance and to keep my arch so i need that support now but like once my knee pain fully goes away i'm gonna switch back to basically barefoot walking or just like with the sock so those are like the basically the reasons why and i talked about the one change i made is that switching my shoes out number two i've definitely just been sitting a lot more using less of my knees standing less walking less i'm glad that i'm taking a gap year and i'm at home i do stand occasionally but i try not to stand for more than five minutes or so or if i have to stand for more than five minutes i put on those thin knee sleeves and also when i go into the garage which is pretty cold I put on these sleeves to keep my knees warm. Another thing I'm doing is I'm wearing two layers of pants. I'm wearing like leggings inside of sweatpants just to keep my legs warm, to keep the blood flowing because the more the blood flows, the more circulation I have, the faster it's gonna heal. And speaking of keeping this area warm, I'm also doing the infrared heat lamp therapy thing. I talked more about it in this video where I basically heal my hip with that lamp, but basically it's an infrared heat lamp. I'm doing that every night for at least 30 minutes and then i'm also doing epsom salt warm compresses for around like 30 minutes as well i do that two times a day and it can definitely help reduce inflammation and swelling of the knee joint after i do those soaks i usually put some lavender essential oil on my knees and as you can tell i'm not doing anything with ice actually the person who made the term rice like rest ice compression elevation that person took back his response in 2013 i think squat university made a post on this on instagram but icing actually increases your recovery time the only time that i would suggest icing is within one day of the injury happening and there's like visible swelling that's the only time i would recommend using ice because the more blood flow you have the faster things are going to heal so putting ice there you're just numbing the area you're not actually helping it be better so i would only use ice within one day of your injury and if there's visible swelling for any other than that use heat heat is always better like basically that's why you want to wear knee sleeves also the bad thing about numbing your pain is that you numb your pain so you basically can't feel anything and then you're like oh look i can walk or stand for a longer amount of time but actually you can't you're just numb to the pain and that's not good because you want to know when you have pain so you can sit down so the point of pain is to tell you when you need to rest. If there's no pain, then you just keep on going and you keep on making the injury bigger and bigger. So that's why I'm not taking any pain relievers because first of all, like my pain isn't that bad that I need it. Like I can sleep fine. When I lay down, there's no pain and there's minimal pain when I'm sitting. So there's no need for pain relievers for my situation. And I don't want to numb the pain because when I numb the pain, I don't feel anything and I'll just probably go squat again, which is not good because my injury has not healed without pain relievers and without ice and numbing stuff like that i know how far my injury has healed i know what i should do what i shouldn't do because my pain tells me what i should and what i shouldn't do so that's why i'm not using pain relievers some other things i am doing i am not doing any lower body movements at least for this week and also for upper body movements i'm not doing anything with my legs so i'm doing larsen presses chest supported rows and seated stuff lastly for internal of course i'm still eating well i always eat well but the thing i have added is i'm taking collagen so make sure you get high quality collagen and also make sure it's grass-fed and i take a scoop of collagen every single day to help that joint grow better and heal better so those are things i'm doing and now i'm going to show you guys the exercises that my pt gave me so the first exercise she gave me is to basically stretch out my abductors a tight abductor can also cause inner meniscus problems oh i forgot to point where the injury was but it's right here on my inner meniscus like right here towards the inside this is my left knee so right here this is where like the injury is so what she told me to do is to get on my right knee and i like to like put a towel down so i don't hurt my knee put my left leg out and then i just rock back and forth like this slowly and that stretches out my abductor so i'll do 10 of these next thing 
she told me to do is some door assisted squats so i just grab onto the door handle and then do squats leaning back a lot so i don't put any pressure on my knees and i go as deep as i comfortably can without pain and then i do 10 body weight squats to the point where i don't have pain so doesn't matter where i hit in depth just anywhere where i don't have pain Last thing she gave me is some balance work. So basically I stand on one foot and then I go front, middle, back, front, middle, back. And I do that for five reps. And I repeat that on my other leg as well. And then I just repeat that whole set for a second time. Okay, so those are the exercises the PT gave me. It was like a free 15 minute call. so. Like it's not an extensive list. I researched a little on meniscus stuff and found a few other exercises that feel good. But yeah, anything that you do, you want to do in a pain-free zone. So if you have pain, just stop. And also with any exercise APT gives you, it should result in relief or more range of motion immediately. So if someone's telling you to do this exercise and after a week, you're gonna get better, that's a complete lie. Anything APT gives, there should be immediate improvement. Like it doesn't have to be 100% improvement, like you're fully recovered, but there should be at least a tiny bit of improvement. And that's how you know it works in next video or in the video i will link down below when i post it i will evaluate like these things that i've done and talk about how much i think they helped me and like what i think of those exercises and that kind of stuff oh yeah another thing i am doing i have a rife machine app so basically rife machine just plays frequencies based on whatever sickness you have and I listen to the frequencies for knee pain. So basically every single part of your body vibrates at a different frequency. So whatever frequency you listen to, if it vibrates with that specific organ or if it vibrates with something else, it can help it heal better. So that's why on the app, I have a few frequencies for knee pain that I listen to. And actually, especially the first time I did it, after I listened to it, it definitely relieved my pain a lot. And speaking of frequencies, there are actually frequencies that cause the opposite. There are frequencies that cause depression, anxiety all of those kind of sicknesses like our body is as much as a electrical being as much as a chemical and biological being especially because our body is made out of water and water can morph into different crystal structures based on the frequencies they hear so for example all of our music is tuned to 440 like the a that tiffany's tuned to it's 440 but actually music is supposed to be tuned to 432 they changed it in like the 18 or 1900s to 440 440 frequencies cause depression anxiety anger aggression all those kind of things so that's just another way the government is trying to kill you just like a side interesting fact that said when i play harp i tune my harp to 432 it sounds so much better so much more calming and yeah so hope you guys learned something as i said in the beginning this is not medical advice professional advice this is just basically what i'm going through just to share my experience so if someone's going through the same you guys know that things like this happen it's not the end of the world when you can't squat so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed like the video if you did comment down below any other questions you have or any videos you want me to make and subscribe and turn on the notification bell if you don't want to miss another one of my videos hope you guys enjoy and i'll see you guys next week I'm just